Dryden, Pence. It's 12 noon Pacific time on March the 27th, 2023. And this is our latest version of what we call So What. A lot's going on in the market, a lot of news out there. Things are trying to make people concerned one way or the other. I'm going to try to take a few minutes, break it down for you, and see where we go. However, as always, we have to have this disclaimer. Remember that past performance is no guarantee of future returns. Now let's look at markets. You know, the markets have been on this period of time where we've continued to see increasing volatility as we go. And you're know, coming out of COVID, we spiked up and came back down. But if you look at the kind of far end of this, you're going to notice since October, we've been in this moment where now when the market goes up, it goes up and it comes back down. And we kind of get what we call these higher highs and higher lows. It's the beginning of a change of a trend. And that's fairly well. Now, let's talk about what's going on and why. You'll hear a lot of news and talk about the yield curve. Well, let me explain that really briefly. A normalized yield curve is that interest rates that are very short term are typically lower than interest rates that are long-term. So then typically you'd see a short-term interest rate where someone's paying you money for, for one month is, is basically you know, lower than you know, money tied up to 30 years. It's because you know, people demand greater interest on their money. And remember, the interest rate is nothing more than the price of money. That's the simplest way to think about it. So basically people demand a little bit higher yield for money longer term. However, the Federal Reserve, really their policy tools, well, they can push around the short end of the curve, what we talk about the short end of the curve. And that's, that's what happens when you see one of these Fed tightening cycles. The Fed's trying to slow the economy down. So they push interest rates on the short end of the curve. And that's what we have now. This is what's called an inverted yield curve, where you can see that, that the short-term part of the curve, you know, very recent, is actually higher than the 30-year Right. So the Fed has said we're going to artificially raise interest rates up higher to slow the economy down. When we do that, we invert the yield curve. Well, that's kind of where we are right now. It is a it is very natural for a yield curve to be upward sloping. It is not a natural event for a yield curve to be inverted. So this is the cycle we're in. And it makes things it makes things distorted. And that's one reason why you have a problem with some of the banks. We had this issue with Silicon Valley Bank, which, by the way, has just gotten bought out by First Citizens. They kind of cleaned that mess up. You know, we had a crisis here for a week or two. And it looks like between the FDIC and the Fed and the Treasury, they've kind of really begun to get control of that. So we don't think it's a big long term issue. However, one has to pay attention that bank earnings may be a little bit impaired because you have this inverted yield curve. So, and the reason is, is banks tend to kind of, you know, borrow short or pay time deposits in the short term thing and then loan out over a longer period of time. So this is the issue that we're in. Now you have this inverted yield. The other thing that's important to recognize is that the yield curve is flat. Here's the, here was the curve before uh, you saw the Silicon Valley Bank collapse, right? We had a peak of about 5.21 in six months, and then it went down to 385. Well, people got a little spooked when they saw that bank situation having the curve move you know, down relatively dramatically because basically everybody wanted to be <clears throat> shorting up their maturities. They wanted to run from the banks into the treasuries, uh, and you begin to see this, this move down the ship of, of yields. But the most important part about this transition is I want you to look at 3.98, the very short end of the curve, at 3.64, very long end. What that means is that you have a yield curve, you know, normally it's like this, and then it inverted like this, and now it's beginning to flatten out. So the curve's got to flatten out before it comes back to me. This is a positive development. So, now that you kind of understand the yield curve moves, you understand how this is affecting the banking sector, putting a little stress on it, but it's it's stress. This is not a structural problem like we had back in 2008. It's a little bit of stress on the, on the banking system, 
Uh, and because of this, I think you're going to begin to see the Fed kind of think about some of these interest rates hike a little bit differently going forward. Bottom line is, I think we're closer to the end of the tightening cycle uh, than we've been in a while. So let's talk about our five P's. We've been, if you've been watching these uh, videos for a while, I've been talking about the big characteristics out there with the invasion of the Ukraine that kind of started all this inflation stuff. The inflation uh, that we have, when does it peak? We talked about interest rates, corporate uh, profits and, and elections. So when we think about when the invasion, when, when are we talking about peace, right? That makes a difference. The war in the Ukraine kind of unleashed the genie in the bottle of a lot of these uh, conflicts and things like that. It'll be significant when that begins to be over. The inflation peak, we think the headline peak in June, 9.1, and it is coming down. So it's directionally correct. Core about those 6.6. I'll show you the chart here in just a minute. And then interest rates, the most important thing is the pause. When does the Fed pause? Because once the Fed pauses, people then can plan their, their payments in terms of trade. They know what their cost of capital is. It makes a big difference going forward how companies are going to be looking at profits and earning estimates into the future. That's why we get to corporate profit. Hard to know whether it's flat, going up, going down, until we really know the issue of what's the terminal rate of these rises in interest rates. And with elections, I still have this on here because it's important to recognize historically, when you have split government after a midterm election, the market tends to be up, SP 500 tends to be up on average about 15.8%. So that bodes well for the back end of the year if we just kind of follow these historical averages. Now let's move on. On the Ukraine, Russia did, was not able to bust out in the winter fighting system, uh, system or period of time out of Bakhmut. They weren't able to reestablish an offensive, and the Ukrainians were able to kind of hold them off. Now what everybody's waiting for is what's next. When do the Ukrainians launch a counteroffensive? That's important, and I think that probably sometime between now and this summer, you're going to see uh, more activity uh, with the Ukrainians possibly uh, launching an offensive counteroffensive uh, counter uh, towards the Russians to kind of break the hold on certain parts of the Ukraine. That's going to be significant because I think the whole world benefits from actions that move us towards resolution uh, of that horrible conflict. Let's move on. Now, here's the interest rate, the effect of Fed tightening on inflation. We got up, as I said before, to a peak of about 9.1. We did that June, July, and then we've been coming down directionally correctly ever since, right? So you're beginning to see all that transitory inflation, the disruption in the supply chain coming out, and then you're beginning to see the interest rate hikes that we've had pick up. Now you can see we tend to spend a lot of time looking at core PCE, personal consumption expenditures, because that's really what people are spending uh, money on. We think it's a much better gauge. Again, directionally correct. We had a little peak up at the end between five, uh, right here at the end as, as we get to adjustments. What's important to remember here is it's fairly easy to go from nine to five. It's really hard to go from five to two. So part of these improvements in inflation, the trend, we think the magnitude of those things may be coming down. We'll have to kind of look and see how we get. We had a very strong uh, uh, GDP number for first quarter. The economy still continues to do well. So this, these improvements in inflation, the magnitude of them may be slowing, even though they could be directionally correct, certainly on the heavy. Now, let's take a look at the fact that the Fed has been raising interest rates now at a pretty severe clip for a while. Here's the things that people have to, have to remember, is that it takes a while for the Fed interest rate increases to work their way through the economy. Fed makes a decision in an afternoon. Markets adjust in five minutes. But businesses and households, it takes some months. And so you're beginning to see the fact that there's a four to nine month lag in the economy from the increases in interest rates. So we're really just now beginning to see the net effect of the first two and a quarter, two and a half percent increases in Fed funds rate. We've got another meeting coming up uh, in May, early May. And there's a lot of data that's going to come up between now and then. So we have to watch that carefully. See, and the headline CPI moving direction, correct? And what happens to that core PCE number? Does it flatten out? Does it turn back down? 
Those are the important things to see because we're now headed to this moment of where a 5% federal funds rate. So what happens next, right? In May, they have another meeting. A lot of data is going to come in between now and then. And do we stay at five throughout the rest of the year? Do we raise it another quarter? Do we raise it a quarter and a quarter, right? So that's going to be really data dependent and driven by things. So I think that probably we're going to have to wait to May to see, is that the last one? Or does it go into the next? So here's our view. How much will the Fed raise in May? Yeah, most likely 25 basis points. How many raises after that? Could be the pause, could be one or two after that. That's going to be important because once the Fed pauses, it's going to be a very good situation uh, for corporations to understand their cost of capital. They can make better estimates of their earnings in the future. Right? That's important. Now let's talk about why all of this inflation is so difficult to get under control. It's not just inflation in and of itself, but it is the components of inflation we have to pay attention to. So you can see here, you can see here the energy costs, they've come down. Food costs, those are coming down. Uh, commodities, the, the rate of inflation, this is the rate of inflation, that's come down. But services, excluding energy, that continues to rise. And that's at about 4%. That's why we really, really think that inflation is going to be over 4%, at least through all of 2023, at least through all of 2023. So I think that you're going to see it was continued to be directionally correct, but very sticky at this level between 4 and 5%. The next big question is, what about the recession? Well, here's the other thing to know. Why is it so sticky? Why is it so difficult? It's because the economy is doing good. Right now, more people are working making more money than ever before. We have more people working today on, on uh, non-farm payrolls than we did at the peak pre-pandemic. That's a good thing. More people have jobs and they're making more money in real wages and salaries than they ever had before. That's important. That's important. We continue to see increasing labor productivity as companies, you know, people get better about doing their jobs, companies technology in and yet we still have this circumstance where there's actually two jobs for every person looking that's an important thing to pay attention to we have one of the strongest employment markets that we have ever had we've got two jobs for every person looking. that kind of keep wages keeps wages up that keeps a little pressure on inflation but it also keeps the economy going well now why am i looking at this very much what's the effect of all this well we have we've got to get into the thing when we talk about labor force participation, right? How many people are working? Here's what we did during COVID. Like it or not, folks, we were paying people not to work. We were paying people more money, more money with all the benefits, not to work than to work. And so look at remember this chart that you can see in every sector except mining. Now look at this chart. This is labor force participation, right? This is how many people are could be in the labor force out there working, out there looking for a job, and, and, and how many people are trying to do that. Well, you can see, point, we get COVID, we stopped the economy, it went way down, and then it bounced back up as we started opening up again. But then you went to a long period of time where labor force participation rate didn't increase much. Why? Because people were being paid not to work. When those benefits ran out, that's when you see at the back end of 2021, it, when those benefits ran out, all of a sudden labor force participation rate goes back up. It moves back up to around, oh, 62.4%. And then it levels off again. Now, why is it leveling off again? Because people still have money. If you look at this chart, look at excess savings, right? Excess savings over your know, normal trend. You look at the very far end of that chart back in 2020, that was the excess savings that people had uh, by, by income quartile. Now you look at the other side of the chart, the June data that we have, you can recognize that people have a lot of money in the bank. And people that have a lot of money in the bank don't necessarily go back to work. They know they can still hang out. They don't need to, do, they don't need to go uh, work necessarily. And if they do, all they have to do is walk out on the front porch and raise their hand because there's two jobs for every person looking. So until we find this burn off of this excess saving, you're going to see a labor force participation rate that's still a bit, bit muted. We need to get back to that number, that 63.4. We have a lot of people who could work, 
we're working, we're making money. That's positive towards the whole overall economy. But we're probably not going to see that until some of the savings firms are. So what does this all mean? Big dynamics. What's the so what? Well, first of all, the big thing we're looking for that's going to affect the stock market, it's going to affect the economy, it's going to affect every decision that people make the rest of the year, is when does the Fed pause? Now, at some point, they're going to. When? When do they pause? What's that terminal rate? What's the highest they're going to reach? That's the first question. And we think we're probably pretty close. You know, maybe May, maybe the next meeting, but we're pretty darn close. And then we think that they're going to hold it out for the rest of the year. So they won't pivot. Pivot is when they start earning lowering rates. We think they're going to pivot probably in 2024. And that's created some some volatility in the market because a lot of folks were thinking, oh, maybe they pivot this year, right? Well, we don't really agree with that. We think they're going to hold it out for a while. So then that brings us to the next question. No recession, no recession, no recession. We're kind of in that camp around the no recession or little recession, maybe towards a little recession, the back half of the year. We think that's probably a likely scenario. And, and the reason why is what I said before. More people making more money than they ever have. People have jobs. If they have jobs, what do they do with the money? They spend it. And if you spend it, do you end up having a recession? No, it's very hard to have a recession when you've got you know, low unemployment. So I think the point is we're looking for maybe a little recession at the back end of the year. It'll feel a little bit like that, not because we're actually going negative. It's just like we've slowed down that speed. So here we are. This is the chart to pay attention to. Pay close attention to headline uh, inflation rates. Pay very close attention to core PCE and recognize that we have probably one to two more uh, increases of Fed funds rate before they kind of pause, roll out the rest of the year. So I think I've summed it up. We're kind of past this banking crisis. People should not be overly worried about that. We're now moving to this environment where everybody's thinking about what happens in the next Fed cycle? Is it a pause? We raise it by a quarter and then pause. What happens? That's the big question. But all in all, the economy is in pretty good shape. The U.S. economy is a steamroller and it continues to move. So we think that we're continuing to move forward the rest of the year. And if you look at history, typically the year uh, in the markets after a midterm election, is typically positive. So we're, 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 we're optimistic about the rest of this year. Uh, we think we'll have a reasonably positive market as we go into the rest of this year. It's going to be bumpy. There's going to be a lot of things going on. There's big themes happening, and those are going to push the market around. But in general, that's the so what. Thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next time. And for those of you who are Pence Wealth Management clients, I want to remind you, that we have our annual client luncheon, April the 29th. Uh, it starts at 9.30 in the morning, West and South Coast Plaza and Costa Mesa. You could participate in person or via Zoom. So you can see it that way. So go to our website, sign up. We look forward to seeing you there. I'll be giving a presentation uh, on what we think the markets are going to do for the rest of the year. Layla is going to be talking about some big planning initiatives. We spent a lot of time also talking about social security and health care costs. Should be a lot of fun, a lot of great information. We'll see you there. Thank you very much.